So oh. we just had a time uh, with uh, Ready Player One. Yep. We and, finally uh, got answers out of Micah. <laughs> they finally. hate. They hate me. T- took a while, but uh, here recently, uh, there's been a lot of remake. Well, okay, remakes are nothing new. I mean, it's Hollywood. They're gonna they're gonna choke a dead horse until it bursts them. Now a, a stack of shit. Let me make sure I I remember who actually said that quote. What? That's a real quote. What? No, horses don't have a gag reflex though. So, but I guess it saying, is easy to choke a saying, horse. Are you saying horses can't be choked? Oh, no, it's, oh, no, it's it's uh, easier because they don't have a gag reflex. So I feel okay. like so it's, it's actually, not much of a challenge. It's actually from the the Bible, Ecclesiastes one nine. What has been will be again. What has been done will be done again. There is nothing new under the sun. Damn. Well, comes I from the ho- I thought it was comes from the holiest of holy scriptures. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, Micah's autobiography. E- oh God, it's not the New Testament, is it? Emo Solomon. Ecclesi- is it new or Old Testament? Is Ecclesiastes new or old? Ecle- no. Ecclesi- it's old. Is it old? old? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is Old Testament. Yeah, so it. So it's before Micah's biography. So there you go. How does your dad feel about that that line? I don't know. Ser- seriously though, how? See, okay, see all right, all right. To see you guys. All right, enough, enough of the blasphemy. Let's get let's get to Leatherface. You're upsetting my mother. Yeah. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, Leatherface. She she bakes really good things. Okay. Yeah. So Very tasty. So, all right, ladies and gentlemen, the history of Leatherface, the history of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre films as a whole. Oh, I thought been... we, I thought we were talking about the history of Leatherface, and it's like, well, Micah can give us an expert demonstration <clears throat> on how to you know tan leather. I That's mean, easy enough. I mean, you just apply it to somebody's face. Here, Nate has volunteered so graciously. <laughs> okay. So anyway, Leatherface or the Texas Chainsaw Massacre films uh, have been through the ringer in some in some cases. Uh, case in point, the first Texas Chainsaw Massacre is considered a horror classic. A lot of people couldn't decipher it between a snuff film and a and and a and a work of fiction. They didn't know if it was real or if it was fit or if it was fake. Yeah. Uh, and that played to the benefit of the film because it became massively successful and is considered uh, is considered one of the best American horror films uh, ever and probably ever will be. Uh, sadly, I believe Gunnar Hansen, the original uh, the original uh, portrayer of Leatherface, passed away not too long ago. Uh, so, um, uh, okay, moving on to Texas Chainsaw Massacre Two. Uh, I got a bad feeling about this. Had Dennis Hopper in it. It was interesting. Uh, had a lot of the original people coming back, but the problem was, ten years had passed by, and the media had moved on. Yeah, that's that's usually how it goes sometimes. Also, didn't most of the original people die? No, 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 no. no. Well, no, not between, not between then and the. Uh, oh then no, then. I mean in the movie. Oh, in the movie. Um, actually, in the first film, the only person who, actually, the original person who, uh, the only people, actually, no, in the, uh, in the film, no one of the family died. No one in the family oh, died. Everyone, okay. everyone survived. Uh, the only per now, here, later on, on, that was retconned later on, but I'll get to that. Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3 is considered an embarrassment because, it was played more as a campy horror film, which a campy a campy horror comedy film. No, and then the fourth one featured Matthew McConaughey. All right, all right as all right. Uh, as Leatherface's normal looking brother, who was actually trying to carry on the family traditions, and well, it was it was absolutely just atrocious. I think what my brother would want me to do is to take my shirt off no no no, no. i mean that's no, pretty well, good mcconaughey right? yeah, that was good mcconaughey that okay was... all right no been working on my mcconaughey no i would say this right here there's only one thing in the world that i like more than taking my shirt off you know what that is driving around in a lincoln continental there you go there you go so uh i don't drive a lincoln because it's cool i drive a lincoln because they pay me to they pay me to. <laughs> <laughs> all right but okay F- funny enough uh they decided to do just a fresh reboot after that, and probably for the best. Well, to me, what was done was arguably to me the second best uh, uh, 
Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie there was. It was after the first one. After the first one, right. of course. Which came out as Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It was just a, a straight reboot and uh, uh, almost a similar retelling of the first one. But it had a more, uh, it had a more, uh, uh, it had a, a historical edge to it. You know, they like portrayed it as though it was a real case that happened, and so they actually had they, like they took out the ambiguity of it and portrayed it as real. Yeah. Whereas in the other one, you couldn't tell if it was real or not. Exactly. Okay. Now it played to the benefit of it, and uh, it was it was scary. It was a scary film, and. Uh, then after that, they had Texas Chainsaw Massacre at the beginning, which told the, which was a prequel to the reboot. So original, so now things are even more confused. Yeah, that's so, really confusing. So anyway, uh, it shows the origins of Leatherface, and then that was horribly reviewed and everything. And they decided, you know what? Let's just give the old boy a rest for a little while. And then they tried out Texas Chainsaw 3D, which yeah, is you know, which, which okay, at the beginning. They had everything perfect. They had a lot of the original actors from the original movie coming back to play the characters that they played. And they had <clears throat> they had everything it pretty much uh came in it pretty much started right at the end of where the first movie left off. Like the very first movie? The very first movie, yes. Ooh. And it, That's a bold idea. I, oh yeah, and it was really well done. And then things went downhill super, super, super fast. Uh, they tried to make Leatherface an anti-hero. They tried to make him into a, you know, the hero of the story instead of, you know, having him be, you know, the deranged villain who was damn near unstoppable. Kind of like, yeah, you know, and, and in all honesty, it just didn't work. If you wanted to try and pull that off, you need to try, you need to do it over the span of a few films. You can't just do it in a span of like 50 minutes. Like, oh, he's a good guy now. You're supposed to sympathize with him. Also, you no, know, you he gotta make eats sure, people. You also got to make sure he moisturizes. Yeah, I guess. Oh. But anyway, now Jokes. they're trying again with Leatherface. This is the exclusive Red Band trailer. Uh, this is I don't know if this is a prequel or a sequel or a reboot or what the hell ever, but whatever it is, we're watching it. Let's get it on screen. As it suddenly it's Freddy versus Jason versus Leatherface. Now that I would pay good money to see. Versus Ash from Evil Dead because Why Chainsaw Duel. Yeah. All right, here we go. Strong bloody violence. Wouldn't expect anything less. Okay. Lionsgate. Oh, no. Yeah, I'm worried. Oh, direct what? TV? No. Lionsgate, the house that Saw built. <clears throat> there was a DirecTV logo in the opening of the trailer. Well, if DirecTV's trying to do a, uh... Whoa! Oh. Well... You ready for your present? Now go on now, pick it up. Whoa. Even Dorf? Ooh! Oh my god, they've got self-propelled chainsaws now. Okay. Okay. Stop. Hold yourself. You cash you eat motherfucker. <laughs> Sorry, like, that's no. an offhand reference right there. Stop. Wait a minute. Take this tank, put some 40 to 1 mix in it. Because, you know, you can't yeah. just run straight gasoline through no, a chainsaw. No, you can't. Um, <clears throat> okay, I have to... I got taken out of this real quick. Go back to the very beginning. 
where you get a close up of her face. Of her face? Yeah, now. Right and here. you're like, okay, all right. And then. She is clearly too old to be wearing that outfit. Maybe she's a cosplayer. It's the 50s. I know, I'm just being stupid. And I saw that and went, nope. Nope, I'm out. Well, you know, I don't know, know what it is. is. You don't know how old she is. But, it, like, I saw that and went, you know, yeah, I'm not. Uh. And then, you know, cow, and then pit. That's super weird. That is super weird, yeah. It's like, kid, move mm. it on over. I mean, come on. Sorry. All right, so what we got here is, from the looks of it, an, another origin story. Mm-hmm. Now, okay, we've seen an origin story to the reboot. Now, are we getting an origin story to the original movie? I mean, is that what we're getting That's here? an excellent question. I think that's what we're getting here. I think so, but I'm not sure. Oh, look at Chico. He's just like... Poor little guy. I'm hungry, feed me. Yeah. So, all right, what we have here... Uh, I I don't know, man. I mean, honestly, if this is another if this is uh are they rebooting the it again? <clears throat> well, if they're trying, okay. Hold on. I need to see who's at the helm of this. Yeah, do I need I need a wiki get us a, a wiki break. Yep. Some sort of search walk slam. No shit. I didn't expect that to work as well as it did, but I like it. Lather face. Guy who runs around killing people with shaving cream all over him. Ah, I don't know. Okay. Oh, it's a prequel to 1974's Aha. Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Okay, so we have a... Directed a, by French filmmaking du- duo Julien Mori and Alexandre Bustillo. There they are, Alexandre Bustillo. They uh, were born right after the... Hmm. Well, Bustillo was. Mori uh, born four years after. Yeah. So they did Inside, which, um, hmm. huh. Home Invasion, young pregnant woman and a mere mysterious stranger who seeks to take her unborn baby. Okay. Wow. Okay. Meh. I, hmm. Meh. I, huh. I I don't know. So, okay. I noticed this. Europe seems to be <clears throat> catching up to horror tropes that American films had 30, 40 years ago. Uh, it's just like the movie High Tension. Have you ever seen it? No, I can't say that I have. Okay. Uh, it uh, it played a lot like a like an old school slasher film. Got horrible reviews, just like an old school slasher film. Mm-hmm. And in all honesty, I liked it all right. Just like an old school slasher film. Yeah, it's good, stupid fun, and I liked it. Now, here's another film that I that I think that you all, I don't know if you all seen it or not. Uh, Wreck, R E C. Nope, haven't seen it. Okay. Honestly, it's one of the most high tension uh, zombie films I've seen in a long time. Uh, these uh, police, uh, the SWAT team is called into a uh, well, SWAT team and a fire fi- uh, firefighters are called into this uh, into this building. There's a medical emergency, and uh, <clears throat> this woman is very. This one is very. Hey, dude, hey. dude, come bastard. on, man. This woman Look is that. this woman is uh, elderly, and she is uh, behaving very very awkwardly. Uh, they're called there, and they are told that they. Uh, uh, that they have to uh, that they have to go in and investigate this. Now, whilst, nope. now whilst they're doing this, whilst the firefighters are working, they have a video crew that's following them. They're filming for like a documentary series. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, these people who are filming, they're they're recording the action and everything, and it actually gives a good excuse to have like a found footage excuse. Yeah, found footage, okay. you know, excuse and everything. And in and in all honesty. 
it's only it's only it's shorter than ninety minutes. It's a shorter it's a shorter horror film. But I, I will be honest, during like the last thirty minutes, you can't breathe because the tension is so high. I mean it and it does masterful work of just, just like ratcheting up the tension. And the second film is the second film actually plays out kinda like Resident Evil Four. Because Ooh. This uh, other this SWAT team goes in. Uh, I'm sorry, not not the first film doesn't involve a SWAT team. The first film just involves a, a pair crew. of police officers and oh. a firefight and firefighters. Okay. Whereas the second film involves a SWAT team of like an expert SWAT team, and um, they have over the shoulder cameras and chest cameras, and they like have the zombies run the zombies run at them, and they like shoot them and like nut. Uh, think about these zombies. So it really is just Resident Evil Four. Yeah, and the zombies Ooh. aren't normal zombies. You know, it's not like a shot to the head does them in. They're actually, they're actually, uh, it's actually a new form of possession that they're not able to figure out how to, how to undo. Ah, crap, there was a girl, they're regenerators. Well, no, here's the thing. There was this girl in the first film, a little bit of a spoiler here. There's a girl in the first film that uh, was possessed. Like, she was legit possessed. Like, she, like, like her body was, ta- her body was taken over and she was possessed by a demon. And this demon just so happened to be able to, uh, through, through bites and through uh, and through uh, you know fluid transfer, was able to possess others. Well, get the holy water and the thermal scope. We'll, well actually, we'll they, take care well, actually, of this they use that to real their quick. benefit in the second one because people don't know how to deal with it. And then a holy man uh, comes in with them and. Uh, these these people are behind the door, and he actually uses like a cross that he has around his neck. He like put he like jams a dagger into the door, and like sets sets the cross on the on the thing. And all of a sudden, you hear the person inside who's like banging on the door trying to get out. They're they just like, stop. nope. They stop, and they and they just like they just like like they yeah they, maybe they I don't want to do slowly. that. Yeah, and it it was very well done. Uh, the two guys who directed uh. Uh, they actually went on to do other films, but those two films were like their best ones. Okay. And I definitely suggest you all watch them if you if you want like de- like good decent horror films. Um, they they actually they actually done really well. They actually did a remake of it here in the states, and it was like very very subpar. Yeah. Uh, called Quarantine. Uh, yeah, okay. Okay. That looked like it was gonna be really creepy, but well. So watch, watch the go original watch the Spanish original version. then. Watch the original Spanish version. It's because I saw I saw a little bit of it. I mean, it's all right. The night, like the whole night vision thing, is kind of awful because there's such a narrow field of view. Well, yeah, well, yeah. Well, in the original Spanish version, it's. I mean, honestly, it. I mean, it's it's taken to the it's used to its advantage because you can't see that far in front of you. Like you can see silhouettes a bit. And like you can see a silhouette in the distance, but like the people in it are just trying to remain as quiet as possible, and it like really ratchets up the tension. It's really really good. So I definitely would suggest it for anyone out there looking for so, a good horror film. All right, so looking at at this particular thing of Leatherface, so yeah. principal photography took place in Bulgaria, which I find interesting because I didn't know that Bulgaria and Texas looked that much alike. But okay. Maybe Bulgaria in the summer. Yeah. Who knows? Um, the film will be made exclusive via Direct TV on September 21st before receiving a wider release on video on demand and limited theaters. So what you're saying is this is essentially direct to VHS is essentially it's about what as this close is. Direct to video, yeah. Huh. That's what I think that, I'm getting here. Uh, okay. Name off, if you can think of any, name off films that were direct to video or direct to direct to physical media that were good. If you can name one, I'll be admittedly a little bit surprised okay wait I got one alright it's good but in terms of comparison to the original it's it, it, it's nothing compared to the original okay 
Lion King Part Two. Simba's Pride. Yes, that one. Okay, that uh, one was right. passable. It was good. If they would have had the the songwriting that they had in the first film, I think it would have been a lot better. But fair compared to what we got, and plus, if they would have kept the original ending in, the original ending was 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 heartbreaking. And also, it, it was also fitting of the character because uh, it was Kovu's mother, you know, the the lover of Scar, you know, Scar's mm-hmm. Scar's uh, lover and everything. Uh, when she was hanging off the edge of this log, she was swatting away like Sim- you know Simba's daughter's uh, you know paw, her trying to help. And uh, instead, in in the Disney cut, the the cut that they released on video, they made it look like she fell. When in truth, she actually looks at her and says. I'd never help receive your help, and she lets go. She actually shit. She willingly kills herself. Now, well, that, yeah, that explains why that cut didn't get in. But, well, you uh, see that, ooh. but you see that it makes so much more of an impact because it just shows you how blind how blind some people are in devotion to some people. Well, okay, especially so, someone like Scar. So what we and, have here is we have a movie that was okay, but uh, greatly outshadowed by the original oh by far by far there's no so doubt about I, it. I mean i'm dude dude come on oh man. actually i have another one i have another one uh wrong turn two the the second wrong turn movie was better than the first one okay and it only and it only went to it only went to dvd and vhs all right okay that's that's fair but i'm it seems like this method of releasing a movie i mean doesn't that seem like it might almost you know lack a certain amount of faith it does in it it does well it's really upon the studio you see whenever the whenever a studio makes a film whenever they get you know have the film made and everything Mm -hmm. they have to go to a distributor and have the distributor you know release it uh to theaters or video on demand i think direct tv was really the only one that would hear them out which you see lionsgate is a film production crew they uh, is a film production studio not a not a uh not a distributor not a distributor yeah so i mean this it seems like an odd call that might it, it almost seems like this thing is maybe doomed from the beginning i'd say so which, it looks that way i mean i i hate to say that but it doesn't look it doesn't look that good. The situation doesn't look great. No, it doesn't. Micah, do you have any experience with uh, with these horror films? Uh, I don't know anything about Texas or, Chainsaw. Or um, direct-to-video movies? Uh, well, there was an original. Uh, Micah test drives a Chevy Silverado, sold one copy. Oh, God. Um, okay. Chico, I'm going to have to But all the critics loved it. Um, all the cri- There was one copy. M- yeah, my mom. Um You've never even been in a Chevy Silverado. You don't know that. Yeah, I do. No, you you know. ain't yeah, what I'm I about. Do. No, you don't. Um, Look, I've seen a few horror movies. I, <laughs> horror movies just don't really... They don't grab you? They don't really deliver most of the time. Uh, some do. I was going to say it depends on... Depends on... Uh, okay. To you, what is the best horror film that you've seen? What's can... one that kind of got you? Dude, I can't even remember. Like... Mr. Smith goes to Washington. Oh well. Oh, I I, I know. Ah, hey, Mike. Ah, Mike, have ah. you seen the movie Seven? No. Okay. That's oh, one that we're one. Have to watch that one. Would get that's you. one. That's one. I think that you would. That it's would quite get you. good. Yes. Def. Uh, it's definitely one of my favorite horror films ever. If not, my, probably my favorite horror film ever because of how much is how much good is in it. How there's there's a lot of well existential done. dread in there. Yeah. Just waiting to happen. Yeah. It's very Lovecraftian, but without the monster. Okay. Yeah, because the monster's inside us all along. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's fair enough. Well, you know what they say, hell's other people. And on that bombshell, um, it's time to end. Thank you very much for watching. Good night. See ya. See ya.